Hey, what's going on? Welcome, guys. I am Nisa from THS Wrestling, and we're back with your raw recap for 816 or the go home show for the party of the summer, SmackDown. All right, before we get started, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and turn on that bell notifications so you get notified whenever we, THS, that hashtag show post videos like this or maybe our red carpet video we did for heels or ted lasso interviews etc etc but got all that out the way let's get into the night that was welcome to monday night rematch yes guys this is the go home show to the biggest party of the summer where it's supposed to go up 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 and be stuck and it's just a rematch show it did not feel like a go home show to me let me know if it felt like a go home show to you if you had time to watch it drop it in the comments below but i'm just going to talk about the few and very few notable things from it we started off with uh, the v from vendetta randy orton came out and he opened the show with him and riddle he's challenging omos later on but we started off with our first rematch which was riddle versus aj styles and the story of rk bro continues now, I'm going to fast forward through a lot of things. They had a match later on. Omos and Randy Orton had their match. And uh, it was it, it was good. It was good. But you know what happens. At the end, we get the RK Bowl reunion. It, it reminded me a lot of Team Hell No. It seems like that's the, the thread we're following. So I just had one question. One question I have. Are we going to get Dr. Shelby back? Because if this is all leading to a big Dr. Shelby faction, maybe with RK Bro and, and Kane, I'm for it. Leader, leader Dr. Shelby. Other than that, I've been screaming about I want to see RK Bro win the tag team titles at SummerSlam. I mean, not because I'm going to be there amongst the other 50,000 people masked up in a close environment. But just because I think that's where the storyline is going and kudos to them for actually having this pull apart, pull away, pull apart, pull away and dragging it out because honestly, Raw has been struggling and the one shining light has been RK Bro. Also, shout out to Randy Orton. Um, as Bro was doing his bro thing, he says very clearly, you can read his lips, I'm not doing that shit shout out also there's been a lot of cussing going on on raw is this how never mind we're getting to that later the almost a superhero catches another l leading up into the big match the big triple threat match with nikki ash charlotte flair and rhea ripley she caught another l against rhea ripley today and at the end she decides to get her heat back i guess charlotte tried to get her heat back on her and her and rhea ripley kick her out now the highlight of this match, guys, was the sign behind her when she comes out that says, Nikki, that's not my hero with the with the butterfly X'd out. And, and I'm not saying that to put it down because you, if you watch my recaps, if you watch these things, you know how I feel. I'm really happy and proud. We all know how talented Nikki Cross is, but I just feel like this gets people feeling away no matter what. Either they're cheering for her or they're booing for her, but they feel away. And that's what I care about. In the land of the rematches, we have Drew taking on Jinder's henchmen again. And if I'm not mistaken, I think like a month ago, he did this exact same uh, uh, handicap match as well but this is all over the fight for the um the sword and the stone sort of thing and i get it like it's a family heirloom is named after your mom i touched on this in the last thing but if this is not gonna lead to a sword on a pole match then what's the point why have it be about the sword why can't it be about the three and b how he left and gender had a fight for they left each other and he had a fight for himself he felt abandoned or something like that like give us something that our the fans already know of we know 3mb why can't you just give us something that has the lines of doing that that's all we've been clamoring for in land of the rematches guys i'm just gonna keep repeating that it feels like because they just repeating the same matches damian priest in the Miz. now this few th you can't say that ww does not do long-term booking are they doing it great on raw eh. But Damian Priest and Miz and John Morrison, this whole thing has been going on for six 
months. That's right. Six, not six weeks, one month, two months, three months, four months, five months, six months. After Miz stood up Linda McMahon style last week out of the wheelchair and did a full uh, Shikari sprint down the ramp, he comes back and he, he debuts as the first guest on Moist TV. I get it. Johnny drip drip wet the moistiest of the moist. Just me saying the words moist makes me cringe. Moist. Doesn't that just, that's just a ASMR. Moist. It just makes you cringe, right? Yes, you're welcome. I was all in your ear holes with that. You're welcome. But we see that The Miz has been faking it for uh, uh, some months now or weeks now. Um, I mean, I guess Marisa know more than we do. <laughs> no, that wasn't. That wasn't funny. My my editor is shaking his head. No, that wasn't funny. I thought it was funny. Anyways, he's been faking his injury. Uh, Johnny Drip Drip isn't too pleased with that. The one shining light out of this, it looks like we're getting a turn slash uh, push for solo Johnny Drip Drip. Now, will he go to NXT and join up with his wife? Or will she come up to Raw? Or... Will we see an actual singles push for Johnny Drip Drip? I actually like all these things that I just said, um, not because I said them, but because they are all interesting. I think Johnny Drip Drip could flourish in NXT. Um, we all know the stories of NXT. I don't do a recap for NXT, so I'm not going to get on that. But I think it'll uh, it, uh, add a breath of fresh air in NXT and hopefully a, a breath of fresh energy in the uh, Performance Center crowd. We'll just move on to some other stuff we have. Mansoor going one-on-one um, against Mays, D'Lo Matten, whatever you want to call him. Look, this guy just a couple years ago, didn't he have a stare off with Brock Lesnar and had the whole crowd like, ooh. And now he's still doing a uh, Mad Max cosplay wrestler thing. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Mansoor picks up the win with help from Ali. We move on that Ali is teaching this man the right way. It's clear that they're building a Mansoor for something big that will happen at Crown Jewel sometime in October. Um, that is when WWE returns to Saudi Arabia. So kudos to them for, you know, trying to build this man up. Maybe it's an Ali versus Mansoor match. Maybe it's a tag team match that they have. Who knows? But one thing we do know that Mansoor can go. So I already spoke about the AJ Styles, Omos, Matt Riddle, and Randy thing earlier. But I just want to talk about this backstage segment they had. So they had a they had a promo. Omos is talking about what he's going to do to Randy Orton. AJ Styles is mouthing the whole promo his and i'm gonna say the whole problem I mean, almost is talking and aj styles is looking up literally saying the words that omos is supposed to say and it just instantly reminded me of will smith and the fresh prince because if you go back to that first season especially those first couple of episodes especially a pilot every time will smith is on screen and it's not his lines he is saying the other person's lines so he knows when to come in acting one-on-one -on -one. don't really worry about the words you listen and you react listen to what the person says and then you react to that because in the real world that's what we do except you're if you're me you're talking to a camera and you're just hoping that somebody is reacting aj did that today in a backstage segment and he did that while on the ramp while matt riddle was cutting his promo challenging him for the tag team titles at SummerSlam. Now I'm gonna have to go back and find this more AJ doing this because I'm just thrilled or excited or wondering if he's always done this and I just never caught it. But anyways, the phenomenal one is still phenomenal and I can't wait to RK Bro takes the titles off them because hey, it's clear we have three hours on Raw and no real tag teams were on Raw. New Day, Viking Raiders, I think that's the only real two tag teams they have now. We end the show though. So the whole time I was wondering, it kept showing a little glimpse of this like young lacrosse team, like all in the front row on hard camera side. Come to find out Goldberg comes out and it's the Suns lacrosse team, our football team. I think they may be a football team. Uh, they lacrosse football, sorry. Goldberg cuts a heartfelt father promo. Bobby Lashley comes out and says he's gonna end his career. Again, not too excited about this match but i kind of feel like goldberg is gonna win goldberg has been coming back and catching a lot of l's lately uh, maybe he wins maybe he wins and then biggie cashes in on goldberg and biggie wins 
Now, Big E has been clamoring for a match with Goldberg, and maybe this is how we get the retirement match where Big E ends Goldberg's career by cashing in on him, and then Goldberg challenges him. He says, hey, I'm gonna put my title on the line. I'll put my career on the line for that title shot, and it's on. We we leave it at that, and that's how we move forward. Yeah, this Raw just really, it, it wasn't that good, and it's kind of tough, right? Because as wrestling fans, if you're watching this video, that means you are a wrestling fan of all wrestling most likely and you know the big news that's coming out on friday or that has the highest to the high potential of happening the day before SummerSlam is that the guy that is known as the best in the world and at his clobbering time cm punk will be debuting on another show it's really tough to not have that in back of your head when you have a show like this that happens on raw so hey i can't wait to SummerSlam. I know we're going to be out there in SummerSlam. Yes, so if you are going to be in Vegas, please, 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 please come say hi to us. Come say what's up. Actually, Jimmy, a member of the THS Wrestling family, said, and I quote, if you come up to him and me and tell me happy birthday, he will buy you a shot. That's a great deal. So make sure you check out The Space on Friday where we have Wessel Swap with, with The Godfather and Disco Inferno and many, 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 many more. We have Murder Def, we have Murder Def Karaoke happening at midnight that night. Um, we have also a live talking shop with the Good Brothers themselves and special guests will be there. Guys, it's going to be a fun event. It's going to be exciting. So please, if you want more information, make sure you follow us right here at ths.wrestling on Instagram to get your ticket information, to get all the links and points, all the stay all the up to dates and stuff like that. And come say happy birthday to me so Jimmy could buy you a shot. Anyways, guys, hope to see you in Vegas. I would love to get your reaction from SmackDown and from Rampage that comes out on Friday night. It's gonna be a good time. It's a great time for professional wrestling. I am Neeson from THS Wrestling. Make sure you can follow me right here at stay fly life yeah that lower third right there baby follow me at stay fly life and just continue enjoying yourself guys oh and make sure you check out that hashtag show for everything trending and geek pop culture